What's a world without tunnels? I mean, really? Whether it's traveling for fun, laying down cable lines, or extracting precious minerals from deep earth, tunnels are one of the most amazing works of civil engineering. Piercing through rocky mountains or fully immersed in deep sea, tunnels help the world connect. And for the past few years, the Seikan Tunnel in Japan has proudly laid claim to being the single longest underwater tunnel in the world. But hold your vessels, fellas. With this new mega tunnel in the heart of Europe, world tunnel rankings are about to change. The new Feymon Tunnel is being touted as one of the largest infrastructural projects underway in Europe as part of the EU's ambitious cohesion policy. The tunnel will establish a concrete link between Central Europe and the Scandinavian countries in the north and promises to be a real game changer for the whole continent. But what's so special about the new venture? Spanning an incredible length of 18 kilometers under the Feymon build, you're about to pass through the longest immersed tunnel in the world. With the German island of Feymon located to the south of the Trait and the Danish island of Loland to the north, the new tunnel will provide a direct land link from Morbivan in Denmark to the Put Garden in Germany. A multi-purpose tunnel with two railway tracks and two roads, this is one of the most ambitious projects of the Danish government. Once open to traffic, the tunnel could slash train time between Copenhagen and Hamburg from the current four and a half hours down to just two hours. And unless Nessie the sea monster gets in the way, the tunnel could be up and running by 2029. But as you might have guessed, building a land route through the sea is one of the most complex works of civil engineering. You see, underwater tunnels are either bored or immersed. While boring is used for deep water tunnels going more than four or five kilometers deep, Immersion is commonly used for tunnels that cross relatively shallow waters. And unlike the iconic English Channel, which was made using a big boring machine, the Feymon will be built on land and subsequently immersed in the water. So how exactly does one go about tossing an 18 kilometer long concrete tunnel on the seabed? Well, here's the easy version. First up is dredging. The literally scooping out of mud and weeds on the riverbed using giant excavators. In the case of the Feymon, the Century Danish warship and an unexploded Second World War bomb. According to the latest updates, 70% of dredging work is done. And once the waterbed is nice and smooth, a solid foundation of sand and gravel will be laid to create a strong base. With a strong foundation in place, precast section concrete will be lowered on the riverbed before a final covering of backfill. In the case of the Feymon Tunnel, we're talking 89 massive sections of concrete. On the Danish side of the tunnel, a temporary factory with six production lines has been set up to manufacture these sections. Each section will be 217 meters in length, 42 meters wide, and 9 meters tall, weighing up to 73,000 metric tons each. That's a lot of concrete. In fact, according to one of the leading project managers, building something like this doesn't exactly come with a manual. You simply learn as you go along. Not very reassuring, is it? But hey, even this makeshift production site is one of the largest tunnel towns ever set up on the continent. Sprawling half a billion square meters, you're looking at the biggest factory ever built in Denmark. For perspective, it's as big as 200 football pitches. And if that's just where they're setting things up, you can probably imagine the massive sums of investment going into the making of this new historic tunnel. And it's not just the billions, but 10 years of research put in towards making the most effective, efficient, and sustainable choice to connect the two land areas. Would building a bridge not be easier? Sadly, the 18-kilometer long Feymon Strait is known for the ferocious winds going from the east of the strait to its west, increasing the risk of collisions. Which is why, after vetting 20 possible tunnel routes and 16 bridge variants, this new plan to create a permanent land route was finally approved in 2020. The sheer scale of the project also means the company building the project will need large amounts of funds to kickstart thanks to EU subsidies and the support from Denmark, Germany, and Sweden, things are finally looking up for this great Baltic dream. But it's the Danish government who's providing the lion's share of the funding by taking out a loan. Luckily for Danish citizens, the project will come with no latent tax cuts. On the other hand, the German government is expected to pay a whopping 800 million euros to connect the crossing to its own motorway network. Ultimately, once the tunnel is built, the Danish government hopes to recoup all that cash by charging car drivers a crossing fee of 100 euros. At a staggering 7 billion euros, you're probably wondering if this massive level of investment is worth it in the long run. In the tunnel's defense, the final electrified high-speed rail line will be capable of reaching 200 kilometers per hour. In addition to a double-track railway, 
a four-lane motorway will also provide safe passage to cars, freight trucks, and coaches across the Baltic Sea. Every year, millions of passengers use a busy ferry service to get from Rorpi to Puttgarden. The ferry takes 45 minutes, but once this tunnel is made, that journey time will be down to 10 minutes by car and just 7 minutes by train. For many, this will make the commute easier, creating more opportunities for businesses and service industries to connect and grow. And while construction is in full swing in Denmark, on the German side, the project seems to have caused quite an uproar. Marine life lovers have been critical of the new venture, leading several ferry companies, environmental lobbies, and even local municipalities to join hands against construction. And let's be honest, they do have a point. The new tunnel could destroy entire ecosystems living on the Baltic seabed. It could also affect water sports and other recreational in the area, depriving locals of a chance to connect with nature. With clusters of orange cranes on the move and huge yellow excavators hard at work, it doesn't look like these few and far voices will be heard. But on the upside, once complete, the tunnel design will remain functional for a hundred years. It will also lead to major savings in fuel and lower the country's carbon footprint. In fact, according to one Danish estimate, within the first 50 years, the tunnel could generate $4 billion in profit. Yet, according to others, these guesstimates of passenger traffic may be overstated, posing a risk that the investment might not be recouped after all, or at least not as quick as the government claims, leading many to wonder if this $10 billion project is even worth the hassle. For now, Femern AS, the state-owned Danish company leading the project, hopes to immerse the first tunnel section by next year. Five times as long as the iconic Oresund Tunnel, this could be the longest combined rail and road tunnel ever built. A true maritime wonder and one incredible feat of modern engineering, the Feyman Tunnel is one of the most amazing mega-projects of our time. By creating a strategic corridor between Central Europe and Scandinavia, this new fixed link could be a real game-changer for the entire regional economy. To learn more about fascinating structures around the world, make sure to hit subscribe so you never miss out.